Welcome back to Gears of the Cotton Game. Today, in deck number 641, we're going to talk about Thalisi, Reverent Medium. Relatively certain I pronounced that correctly. And it's very hard for me not to call this particular legend Khaleesi. Anyway, five mana weed a three, four human cleric. None of that matters to us, though. At the beginning of each instep, each instep, create X11 spirit tokens with flying where X is the number of tokens you created this turn. So, all your tokens are essentially buy one, get one free. All you have to do is just having made them that turn. They don't still have to be living, but, you know, just having made them. And you get Flying Spirits. So, I read this and I thought, well, it's my life's goal to make as many tokens as possible. So that in black and white. Uh, so that's what I did. Um, I have, uh, I'm going to present it to y'all a little different because I've got like token makers and then uh, token payoffs. But first we will do a, as normal. We'll get our uh, meta ramp out of the way. We're going to start, of course, the soul ring, the charcoal diamond, marble diamond. I love you, Commander Legends. Um, the Commander Sphere, Burnished Heart, Orzhov Signet, Orzhov Clue Stone, and the Orzhov Key Rune. So uh, that should be enough to get us, you know, somewhat. But let's look at some token makers. Wow. Okay. Um, yeah, all of these are just, you know what? I, there's no, you know, we're just going to take them as they come. Zat's Will. Here we're going to make Thralls, uh, where X is the greatest power. So, zero one Thralls. That's fine. But, you know, people are not really excited about Thralls, but when you factor in that this card says Thralls and Spirits, that means, oh, it's really, really good. Now, uh, there are a few cards I, I want to preface so that if you've got them, you should play them in here. What is that? Uh, Divine Visitation is awesome. Anointed Procession is awesome. Those are perfect cards for the deck, but I don't have any copies right now. So, But um, I think it started off as like Raise the Alarm. You know, you get two soldiers, and then it was Gather the Townsfolk. You get some humans. Uh, Captain's Call, we're going to get three soldiers. Servo Exhibitions, which we get two servos. Queen's Commission, we get a couple of vampires at Life Link. Um, take up arms, we're going to get three warriors. Midnight Haunting and Lingering Souls, you know, plays real well into the spirit theme. Um, I like General's Enforcer because it also makes our commander indestructible. In addition to you know, some targeted graveyard hate and token creation. So, I mean, it's it's not cheap. It's four mana to do that ability. But uh, just for a two mana, two, three, this is this is way not bad. Mobilization is just a good one. Uh, I mean, you know, it's a good way to dump unused mana and make some soldiers. Uh, the new Call of the Copper Coats. Uh, yeah. Choose any number of target opponents. Create X human tokens where X is the number of creatures those opponents control. So that's pretty good. Hero of Blade Hold. You know, it attacks, you, you get a pair of soldiers. Uh, Phantom General. That's actually a payoff card. It should not be with the, uh, yeah. Anyway, your tokens get plus one, plus one. Uh, Call to the Feast, you know, three vampires. Increasing Devotion, 5 and or 10. Uh, retreat to Emeria, tokens for landfalls. Or, if you know, an, uh, a one-turn anthem. We got the Batman. Uh, skeletal Vampire, you know. Uh, it's just a bat token-making machine. Uh, Requiem Angel. Uh, it's a little on the expensive side, 6 mana, but it'll be okay. It's not the most expensive token maker we got, that's for sure. But a non-spirit creature you control dies, you make a spirit token. So if in theory we had a way to freely sacrifice a creature, 
we could make our token, say we made two soldiers, and we sacked those two soldiers and ended up getting two spirits from the Requiem Angel. And then at the end of turn, we get two more spirits. You see where I'm going? Yeah. Um, and we're going to sack them to things like Ashnod's Altar and Viserys Seer. So, uh, White Sun Zenith, when you just, you know, I'm telling you, cats will overrun the world if you let them. And right here, this is exactly what's happening. Uh, snake Basket. Come on. I couldn't, I couldn't build this without a snake basket. I couldn't. Um, I know, I know, Parhelion 2, it's, it, it, you're like, what? You know, because you have eight man just laying around so often. But <laughs> it makes angels. And it's, uh, a, okay, it's a fun card and I love it. And then, of course, we've got Storm Herd because why not? I mean, it is the ultimate token making spell. Um, but the Storm Herd was kind of what encouraged me to go with, like, the Soul Warden, the Soul's Attendant, and the Suture Priest route. You know, because we're going to be putting a lot of creature tokens into play. I might as well be getting something out of it, right? Um, especially when you look at Congregate. Whoa. Uh, Intangible Virtue is going to help out uh, with the Anthem cause. Um, to make a stand uh, will kind of protect us from that untimely wrath, which is Cauldrons of the Good Sack Outlet. Uh, you know, Original Tasa. Woo. That's strong. Original Tasa is strong. We got Prava, you know. As long as it's your turn, your tokens get plus one, plus four. What? And it makes a token? Um, okay. The Nightblade. Whenever a token you control leaves the battlefield, here's another one. You know, each op opponent loses one and you gain one. Uh, Corpse Knight, actually. The correct version. The 2-2 version. Uh, another creature enters the battlefield under your control. Each opponent loses one. So now we are actually... We have a couple of different axes here in which to play. We can win through combat damage just by sheer overwhelming of tokens. Or do we have like the um, the grindy kind of, uh, what do they call it, aristocrats theme, you know, sacking and whatever. Um, cruel celebrant, you know, another creature dies. Each opponent loses one, you gain one. Uh, we got the, uh, now the Kabir takedown, I paused on, on this. First off, it's a great card. Deals damage equal number of creatures you control to a creature or a planeswalker. So this is a two mana removal spell in this particular deck. It's going to kill a creature or a walker, just flat out, right? But the land side of it, and I was, I didn't want to take out a land for it because here, I haven't really talked about my own personal theories as to the MDFCs. Um, and, but it seems like to me, if you put it in the deck, replacing the land, you haven't helped yourself any. I don't know. I could be wrong. Probably am. But I feel like I'm running this card because I like Kabira Takedown. I like the two mana kill spell. It also has the upside of in a pinch. I, I get a man out of it. Just my theory. For what it's worth. Now, let's look at some removal. I mean, we're in black and white. This is like the most removal -y colors that ever removal. Right? Um, we have, you know, Slash the Ranks, which is cool. Uh, return to Dust, Murder, Dire Tactics. There's a good chance we're going to have a human. Uh, Disenchant, Terror, Doomblade, Soul Shatter, Oblivion Ring, Mortify. It's like there's nothing that Black White can't take. And, and there's this is just a smattering. Y'all know there's Utter End and Vindicate and Anguish Done Make. There's all the good stuff, you know. Uh, Citywide Bust. But let's look at the ones that actually make tokens, okay? I... I am running bacon to a pie. Now, I know 
It's a four mana murder. But it's a four mana murder that you get the possibility of gaining three life later. And this is a token. A, a Our commander doesn't care if it's a creature token or a food token or a whatever to treasure token. You get a food token, therefore at the end of that turn, you're going to get a spirit to boot. So you're going to get a 1-1 one, one flyer in addition to your four mana murder, in addition to your uh, food token that you can gain three life off of. So all that being considered, it's not terrible. Um, Taste of Death... You know, just, uh, wow, everybody sacks three, you get three food tokens, um, that can get ridiculous. Necrotic Hex. Each player sacks six creatures now, and you create six zombies, and then you're going to get six spirits on top of that. Yeah, that's, I feel like that's worth seven mana to me. And then, of course, there's Marshall Coup, because... Yeah. Now, granted, if you power up the martial coup all the way, um, you're gonna kill your your commander, you know. But martial coup is typically one of those things that you tends to be a game winning spell. So let's look at our non basic land, shall we? Uh, got a pretty pathway, the bright climb pathway with the black on the other side, the caves of Coilos, uh, Ash Baron. Evolving Wilds, Tainted Field, Forsaken Sanctuary. Love the cycle lands. I run them every time I run across them, you know. Um, Rupture Spire. Myriad Landscape's going to help kind of, you know, ramp in the two colors that have a problem with it. The Command Tower. Terramorphic Expanse. Orzhov Guildgate. Orzhov Basilica. Scoured Barrens. And Rogue's Passage. You know it was in there. So that is uh, our uh, token. And from what I understand, this is a fairly popular commander. Um, I, I don't know how many decks it's got on the wreck, but uh, yeah, those that, that's not going to be anywhere near enough tokens, is it? I probably need to get two of each token that it can produce so that I can, you know, have sick or non sick or tapped and not tap. But. Anyway, that is 641. We're starting a new row today. Man, seems like we just started that block. It don't seem like Kitty Cat's Puppy Dogs was that long ago. <laughs> but anyway, that's what I have got for today. I do appreciate y'all watching. Um, thank everybody so much. And... Uh, Hope you liked yesterday's video, uh, trying out, you know, um, some, some decks in the play group that, you know, I play against, you know, and, and they are, I'll tell you this, I have an amazing play group. I know everybody has an amazing play group, but, um, I have, they're very skilled deck builders. They're very skilled players. Um, but there again, they kind of hold the same philosophy that I do. We're just having a good time, you know, but anyway, uh, I appreciate y'all watching, liking, subscribing, if you haven't. And you're still watching 13 and a half minutes in the video. Click it down there. Uh, but right now, we're going to shuffle and cut.